Hello and welcome to the Nothing Nothing and today is now February 2023 so that means it is Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominee class time. Like the last two years now that I've done this, I will be going over my voting, who I'm voting for, who was nominated, where do I think they're going to go, and so on. But first we need to address, address a new reality. This year, I actually tried to predict who was going to be on the ballot. And we need to see how close I got. But just as a reminder, this is who I thought would have appeared on the ballot. Muse, Queen Against the Stone Age. Queen to the Stone Age, excuse me. Missy Elliott, Shaka Khan, either with or without Rufus. Rage Against the Machine. Kate Bush, Devo. Dionne Warwick, Beck, A Tribe Called Quest. Iron Maiden. Outcast, Phil Collins, George Michael, and wildcard Mariah Carey. And now we will go into the nominees, and I will, as we go along, I will address if I have been correct with any of those. First up, we have Kate Bush nominated again for the fourth time. So that is a correct guess. Kate Bush is best known for two songs, Wuthering Heights and uh, Running Up That Hill. And if you might remember from my last couple years, I've been saying that she might be able to get in. It would take an extreme case year. But she's had one of the best things that can happen to an artist happen to her recently. Introducing she her song, Running Up That Hill, appeared on Stranger Things. And it brought the song back to relevance. And it brought her back into relevancy. This could be the year for Kate Bush, if, if the push is made. Now, she still is hurt by the fact that she never really came to the U.S. to promote her albums and singles. So, it, this will be a great, this will be the best test of her legacy, or, or chances on this ballot, on these ballots. If she cannot progress any higher than where she's been the last few years, that will be a perfect sign that we need to reconsider where we need to move her to. Coming in second nomination was for Cheryl Crow. I was not even close <laughs> on that one. Sheryl Crow from the, was best known from the 19, 1990s and 2000s. And when I think of Sheryl Crow, I immediately think of two things. She did the Bond theme Tomorrow Never Dies from the Bond film. And she also did Real Gone from the Cars soundtrack. Now that's what I think of her. I don't know if she's ready for this class. I don't think she'll make it this year, but I can't see a chance for her to get in eventually someday. Then third, we have Missy Elliott. That was a correct guess. And uh, both Cheryl Crow and Missy Elliott is on their first time appearing on the ballot. But uh, Missy Elliott is the best-selling female rapper of the 2000s. And arguably in this year of the rap class is very limited, but out of all of them, I think she'd be the only one that'd be nominatable and to get inducted in this year. But we'll get back to it. Then next up, like I predicted two years ago and last year, we have Iron Maiden appearing for the second time on the nominee. That was a correct guess. And in this case became a whole lot easier for Iron Maiden now. Not Judas Priest was put in under musical excellence. They don't need to worry about a rotation anymore. They don't have their own metal rivalry now. They pretty much have a freeway. Or they can literally run for their own hills now to, to, to a nomination election, hopefully, this year. And then after that is first time on the ballot... Joy Division slash New Order. Uh, I was not even close on this one. I thought they were already in, to be honest with you. But hey. So, just as, an, just as a little knowledge thing, Joy Division and New Order are essentially the same band, but what happens is, Joy Division comes first, and they're more of a punk fusion, pop fusion thing. And then Ian Curtis ends up dying. And eventually what happens is to the remaining band members eventually 
wrote become a new band called New Order, which becomes more of a new wave synthesizer group in the 80s. Now, I do agree that their legacy, I do, I do see their legacy being worth a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nomination. But I've just never been a fan of them, unfortunately, both versions. I find the story of them more interesting than I do anything else. And anyway, next up, another first timer was in, with Cindy Lauper. I didn't, was not even close <laughs> with this one. As many of you know, as soon as I just said that name, you're probably thinking of three songs in your head right now. Girls Just Want to Have Fun, Time After Time, and True Colors is what you're probably just thought of. And maybe even a fourth one, The Goonies Thing from the movie. Her album, for her debut album, had four hits off of it, which was a bit of a rarity at the time in the 80s when she came out off the album it, She's So Unusual. And actually, very much like Dolly Parton, she's also become known as a bit of a humanitarian with uh, her True Colors Foundation, with her work with LGBTQ folks. She appeared on the she appeared on the the Apprentice, the Celebrity Apprentice, a few years ago now. She's generally kept herself decently relevant. You'll still see her on a TV show. She'll put an album out. And when it got to the 90s, she was doing Broadway and was winning awards. So she's had a pretty decent, successful career for, with some 40-some years later. And then next up, we have George Michael, who was nominated for the first time. And that was a correct guess. I had a feeling he was going to be on here this year. Now, arguably, I don't think I even need to make any case for George Michael. I think most people know who he is at this point. But originally, he was one half of Wham! with Andrew Ridgely, who had hits such as Careless Whisperer, Wake Me Up Before You Go, Go, and even I'm Your Man, and so on with Wham! However, I believe he is nominated for his solo career, so that means we're going into his albums, such as I Gotta Have Faith, Faith, um, Listen Without Prejudice, Older, so on. He's best known in this period for Faith, Father Figure, One More Try, Freedom 90, Outside, and many others. Arguably, he always changed with the times, and he always managed to keep himself relevant. And in fact, he is the first person you can arguably say, <coughs> excuse me, that appeared in a, what we would now call a carpool karaoke section session with, with James Corden for a Red Nose special. And then up next, following Dolly Parton, is Willie Nelson. I was not even close on this one. I, I feel stupid, though. I probably should have put a country artist in here. Especially someone of Dolly's kind of caliber or legendary status. And there was really only one I could think of that's like that, wasn't it, at this point? And the answer, of course, here is Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson is a long, long times country artist. But I do think he has a better case partially than Dolly Parton. Because of his... He was always a bit of an outsider in country music, if you really know his history. He started as a songwriter. He wrote Patsy Cline's Crazy. And so on. He was a pretty popular songwriter at first. Then he went. So, then he started beginning his own career, and then he eventually got to his first hits at, with during his phase with Outlaw Country, which is where I think he becomes the closest he's ever gotten to rock and roll, by definition. With with songs with Waylon Jennings like "Mamas Don't Let Your Boys Become Cowboys," "Grow Up to Be Cowboys," so on. And then he becomes known briefly for a top ten hit in 1982 again with. Uh, Always On My Mind, which had been previously recorded by Elvis. And then he also becomes, he's also famous for one other song. On the road again, like a band of gypsies, we go down the highway. Yeah, likely you've heard that one if you were in, if you've watched Forrest Gump, because that was in the soundtrack. 
it wasn't from that film originally, but it's not associated with Forrest Gump 2. And his career has pretty much lasted all the way since the late 1950s. So he has, so he has, um, he has a uh, Dolly Parton outweighed by like nine years. Then next up we have Rage Against the Machine. I was not even close. Oh no, I guess I was right. Excuse me, I was right. I was correct there. I had a correct guess in Rage Against the Machine appearing for the fifth time. I got a feeling that they've missed their chance to be inducted in the last two years, but we'll get to we'll go further on. We'll discuss them later when we get to the where I think they're going now. After this, we have Soundgarden nominated for the second time, and I wasn't even close. I'd kind of forgotten about Soundgarden was nominated once, and I even forgot I probably should have listed them. When it comes to the grunge era, I kind of prefer Nirvana over Soundgarden, and I even prefer Pearl Jam over Soundgarden. Excuse me. But I will say that if you're gonna, if you want to use the argument that we're missing the main groups of grunge, then you've got to add something when we need to have Soundgarden. But I really think Chris Cornell's death actually might have actually put the nail into Soundgarden because I think everybody's kind of forgotten about them since, unfortunately. And while they were good during the 90s, his death kind of just ended it all for them, really. I stopped hearing them being talked about, and you got to wonder if that hurts a legacy because... You generally still want to be talked about after your group breaks up or falls apart or someone dies. Then next up we have a returner for a, after a long time. The Spinners on for the fourth time on the ballot. They're a group from the 60s and 70s is what they're mainly known for. They originally were on Motown as the Detroit Spinners. However, they did not really go anywhere on Motown, so they so they left and went to, was it Philly, or was it to Atlantic Records, where they really took off. They ended up becoming, having an album from 1972 called The Spinners, which is very famous for having, I think I'm falling in love on it, and also for having... I'll be around, which are now considered standards in Philly Soul. And then later they had a number one hit in 1976 with The Rubber Band Man. And they continued on throughout the rest of the 70s and into the early 80s. But after that, they went into more of the, the harder or R&B adult route. And I think that's when they started losing their relevancy and people started forgetting about them. And I don't think they've ever really had a popularity boost since. And we'll discuss what I'll think about them too in a minute here. And then next up we have a try called Quest. I don't know why I left them out. Oh no, I left them too. I guess I, I screwed up there. Again, I that was a correct guess. They are on the ballot for the second time. I was incorrect the first time. But anyway. Another rap group... Uh, from the 90s, please, you can check out my other first video on this, or second video, last year's, if you want to hear more about Tribe Called Quest. But I think this could be their year, but we'll see. And then coming up for another first-timer, we have the White Stripes. I was not even close on this. I hate to say it, that even though I was raised in the generation of White Stripes being huge in Seven Nation Army, I don't think they're nominatable enough, just on their own, as White Stripes. I would argue if this is if this was just Jack White, or Jack White and the White Stripes, like what they were trying to do with Shaka Khan and Rufus, that it might have worked better. Because I think it's Jack White who's more famous. And if you ask somebody out on the street, name the White Stripes, who's in the White Stripes, their biggest songs, they're probably only going to be able to name Seven Nation Army and Jack White. And then our last nominee is Warren Zavon. I was not even close. This is his first time on the ballot. Even, but here's my thoughts about Warren Savant's case, as I put on my Twitter. Even the werewolves at Lee Ho Fuchs wouldn't know him for anything else after 
werewolves of London unless you knew about them already. Now, some people might also know Lawyers, Guns, and Money, which has also came out of the same album, Excitable Boy. Although he has had a, a major reappra a reappraisal since his death in 2003. But basically, he was a singer-songwriter from like the mid-70s all the way up to his death in 2003. He was he was more of a singer singer than a popular guy, but everybody eventually heard him in Werewolves of London and Lawyers, Guns and Money. He is hurt by also hurt by this fact that he's he's only known for base most people only know him for Werewolves of London, which I referenced in the tweet by saying even the werewolves at Leo Folks, which is the restaurant mentioned in it. But anyway, my five picks, my five votes. Are Kate Bush. Yes, shocker, I put Kate Bush. I've had a change of mind because of her success with uh, simpler th Simple Things or Stranger Things, Iron Maiden, Cindy Lauper, George Michael, and Willie Nelson. Oh, I forgot to mention about Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson's a country artist. He shouldn't be nominated. Well, Billy Parton's in, Johnny Cash is in. There's no point to make this argument anymore. Same with the rap as well. But what will happen if none of these people make it in? Or who will, if, well, if they don't make it in? Kate Bush, well, this is where it gets interesting. Kate Bush has had a career boost with running up that hill on Stranger Things. If she, wouldn't, if she doesn't get in this year, I think it may be time that we need to consider just moving her to musical excellence because we may be done. She may have hit her peak too soon. She might have hit the peak that she needed to have to keep herself in the popular culture, and, and, she's, and it's too late. It came too late. Cheryl Crow, I don't even know if she'll be back next ballot. I think this is going to be a Mary J. Blige case where they nominated a woman, this woman this year, and it, I don't think it's going to make it. She's popular, and she might be able to stay in the ballot for a few years, but I would need to see the end result. Missy Elliott could be a first ballot. Nominee so or inductee, so I'm so I wouldn't say that she can disappear right away, but I think she could make a she could make the next couple of years bell. She can be kept on. She would get in eventually. Iron Maiden. If we've learned anything from Judas Priest, this would be their year. Finally. So I think they're in this ballot, but if not, leave them on again. They'll get next year probably. Joy Division and New Order. Probably this ballot, or if not, leave them on for another couple years. Then after that, move them into the musical excellence, early influence territory. Cindy Lauper, probably a first ballot nominee, but if not, leave her on the ballot. She'll get in the next couple years here. Uh, George Michael, probably a first time ballot. But if not, also leave him on the ballot for next year. He'll probably get in within the next couple years. Willie Nelson, probably a first-timer, also, but if not, leave him on the ballot, probably a next year or the year after. Rage Against the Machine, probably had already hit their peak with nominees, nominations, and probably needs help now. If not, needs move to musical excellence. Soundgarden, probably keep on the ballot. They'll probably be in another couple of years here, or even this year with the way they've Last time I voted, the results were. Uh, the Spinners. Maybe put on the ballot one more time. But then if not, we'll definitely know the 70s. Trying to get 70s groups into the Rock Hall will be over. And then we move them to the Musical Excellence at that point. Uh, the uh, Tricol Quest, just leave on the ballot. This is on their second year. They did pretty well last year. And there's kind of a tough class this year, so the rap acts will be fighting really for one spot. Probably owned by Missy Elliott. Uh, the White Stripes, as you've already heard, I don't think they would make it at all as the White Stripes. I think they would need to be nominated as something separate, like Jack White and the White Stripes, or Jack White with the White Stripes, something like they did with Chuck Conn and Rufus. And then Warren Zavon, uh, this is the tough one. Arguably, keep on the bell for one or two more years. 
but if, if he's stuck near the bottom by the end of the second or third, push him right over to uh, Musical Excellence, where he would definitely fit, or even Art and M again. He's the only one on this list that you can arguably give the Art and M again to. For the song, his songwriting career. Same with Kate Bush, too. Same with Crow and Michael, George Michael. And yes, with that, that is that is the nominees, the updated list, my votes, and where I think all the class of 2023 will be going. As you now know, as you may know, you can vote online at the Rock Hall's official page for your f top five favorite nominees to be nominated to hopefully get elected into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class this year. And with that, I thank you for watching, and I apologize for this being long, but because of a new segment I did earlier in the year, I have to I have to address it. And with that, I will see you again sometime soon, hopefully. But if not, I will see you when the fan valley closes, and we will discuss that and see if I was way off or way right.